What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pete and I just want to take a quick moment to thank everybody that subscribed recently as it really does mean a lot to me. And if you're watching this and you're not subscribed and you like what you see, please think about hitting the subscribe button below. If you're here just for the conclusion and you want to know what I think of the product and you don't need the installation guide, then please feel free to jump to the end of the video and then come back at a later point if you need the guide then. Anyway, on with the video. This is the GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition. It's one of the most powerful GPUs currently available, but it likes to get quite toasty and loud. This is the hybrid cooler from EVGA, and it's going to solve all of our problems. To start with, you're going to need a set with a 4mm hex driver included. I got mine from Amazon. And a set of Phillips screwdrivers that include a size 1 and size 0. Yeah, these screws are real tiny. First, we'll use the Phillips size 1 to remove the two screws nearest the bracket circled in yellow. And then the size 0 for the remaining 14 circled in red. This will allow you to take off the back plate and throw it in the bin. Don't throw it in the bin, you'll still need it. Next, hop around to the bracket and remove these screws using the size 1. Make sure to put the bracket aside somewhere safe, as you will be reusing this later on in the installation. And back to the back of the card, use the Phillips size 1 for the 4 spring screws and the 4mm hex for the 14 teeny tiny standoffs circled in red. Once you've done this, you can carefully pull the card apart and again carefully disconnect the LED and fan. It's definitely easier to disconnect the LED first. Now make sure to clean off the thermal grease. High percentage isopropyl is recommended. Take this opportunity to transfer any remaining thermal pads back onto the stock cooler in case you need to reinstall it in the future. Okay so we're making good progress. Most of the scary stuff is behind us and now we can focus on putting things back together. Well, you can, I already did this. Grab the memory base plate and install it on the card like so. Whilst holding it in place, flip the card over and use your third hand to screw in four number 14 standoff screws. We have a very similar process for the heatsink. Hold it in place like this and screw it in using three number 13 standoffs. Now, the easiest part of the process to forget Take the rubber insert and fit it to the metal post on the memory base plate. It's finally time to install the pump. Don't touch the thermal paste on the bottom of it, obviously, and carefully place it down onto the GPU. The hoses will fit into the grooves on the rubber piece. You'll want to make sure the radiator fan cable is fed between the hoses and sits in the small groove. Hold the pump in place and tighten in four number eight spring screws to keep it there. Run the cable for the card fan and pump around the pump and under the groove of the heatsink. You can use the provided super tiny tape to hold the cable in place if need be. Attach the LED cable on the new shroud to the card and then wiggle the shroud down and into place. Now is a good time to check nothing is obstructing the fan. You don't want to figure that out later. Reattach the bracket making sure the metal lip is above the plastic shroud. Flip the card over and tighten six number 12 screws circled in red and one number 13 circled in yellow. Now go and get your back plate back out of the bin and place it on the rear of the card. Use two number nine screws for the two nearest to the bracket and then 10 number 10 screws circled in yellow and finally four number 11s circled in green. And there you have it. Would you believe it? Your shiny new hybrid card. Okay, conclusion time. What do I think and is it worth your money? Well, if you've used the 1080 Ti Founders Edition card, you'll know that that card likes to get to 84 degrees and stay there almost all of the time. That is, after all, what it was designed to do. But some of us, me included, aren't particularly comfortable with that kind of heat. And even if you were comfortable with that kind of heat, it doesn't allow for any kind of room 
for overclocking because if you start to overclock a founder's card, you have to crank the fans up to kind of 80% minimum just to keep the temperatures down. And that's so loud, like really, really loud. And it's just not worth it. So what this kit does then really is give you back some of that overclocking room. It brings the temperatures that you're hitting down to 50 degrees because it's water cooled and allows you to use that extra room way before the thermal limit to push your card and get that extra performance out, which really can be quite a lot of performance in games. And as a plus side, there's no need to run the fans at 80%. They just run as they do and they're significantly, significantly quieter than the founder's card. Something quite cool about this kit is that the fan included is actually just a three pin fan. So if you were happy with bumping the temperatures up slightly to say 60-ish degrees rather than 50 degrees or 65 degrees rather than 50 degrees, you could take the fan that comes included with this and replace it with a three pin silent fan, like a static pressure silent fan and run that constantly at say 11 or 1200 RPM you wouldn't hear it at all and you would still be 20 something degrees below what you were hitting before with the founders card and you'd have your overclock which would give you the extra performance that you wanted really it's kind of a win 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 the only downside to this product is that it does cost quite a lot i paid 170 pounds and that's a lot less than the price of the card obviously but it's not cheap overall it really depends what you're looking to get out of your 1080 Ti Founders Edition. If you feel like you want that extra performance because you know it's there and it's there for you to take and use in your games, but you don't want the extra noise and heat, then this is a great purchase for you. If you've got your 1080 Ti and you're happy using it at stock because it's already a very powerful card, then at stock, that fan's not gonna go over 50% and you're not really gonna hear it anyway. As with many devices, it comes down to personal preference and as you're on this video already, I would assume you're looking for that extra performance. And if you are looking for that extra performance, you will find it here and it won't be loud and it won't be warm. Don't forget, if you liked the video, like the video. And if you really liked the video, subscribe. I've been Pete. Thanks for watching.